All right, this is the sub day here in AB Calc. It's going to be a regular day just with a video instead of me being there personally. So you're going to go over your homework, the area between two curves uh, with respect to X we're used to. We will then quiz, the uh, sub will administer the quiz just like a regular quiz. You will turn it into the box. And then when everybody's done the quiz, we will have our lesson. Uh, the sub's going to pause the video when we get to the quiz. He'll play the video when everybody's done. We'll do our lesson on area of region between two curves, but with respect to Y. So let's start with going over homework. So I picked out a few of your homework problems that I thought you probably would ask, uh, and we'll go over those. For the first one I picked out was 26. So it's finding the area between these functions without using a calculator is the intent. And the functions are the square root, cubed root of x minus 1 and x minus 1. So we have a situation where we're not given x equals, we don't know the bound. So we're going to have to assume that these intersect somewhere. Well, it's actually not easy to figure out what x is in this case. I could try to cube both sides. And sure, that would give me x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 cubed. But to solve for x, really, I need to, I would have to cube this, subtract x, factor it. It would be, you know, a little bit more difficult than it necessarily has to be. So instead, I'm just going to try to figure out, you know, the values that work here. So I know when x is 1, we get the cube root of 0 equals 0, so that works. I know that when x is 2, I get the cube root of 1, well, that's just 1, and I get 2 minus 1, that's also 1. So that works. And it turns out if I pick x is 0, I get the cube root of negative 1, well, that is negative 1, and I get negative 1 over here, so that works. If I think about any other values, like say x is uh, 3, b the cube root of 2 is equal to 2, that's not true. So that's not a solution. If I think about x is equal to negative 1, I get the cube root of negative 2, which is equal to uh, negative 2, and that's not true either. So it's really uh, 0, 1, 2. That will help me sketch my graph. at 0, 1, and 2. Okay. Well, at 1, I know we have 0 and 0. At 2, we will intersect at 1. And at negative, uh, at 0, we will intersect at negative 1. Now, I know x minus 1 is just going to be a linear equation. So I can go ahead and just say this is x minus 1 right here. But what does the cube root of x minus 1 look like? Well, let's think about it. If I took, say, 1 and a half, I'd get 0.5, the cube root of 0.5. So the cube root of 0.5 is x is one and a half. Now, what is that going to have to be? Is it going to be a number bigger than, uh, you know, 0.5, which is this value right here, 1.5 minus 1, or is it a number less than? Well, it's got to be less than since it's the cube root. So you can check with your calculator, 0.5. Actually, no, it's going to be a number greater than to the one-third because of the decimals. It's a number like 0.79. So that's a number bigger than. So actually, we're going to be up here. So the cube root, at least to the right of 1, will look like this. And the same thing will happen if I take like 0.5. I would have the cube root of negative 0.5. That is going to be a bigger negative value than negative 1.5. So we'd kind of have something like that. So here is the cubed root of x minus 1 right here. So I need to find this area here. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. And here. So these two graphs actually intersect at uh, three spots. So we have those situations where we need two different intervals. We'll need the interval from 0 to 1 of the top minus the bottom. The top is x minus 1 minus the cube root of x minus 1. And then I will add to that the integral from 1 to 2 of x minus 1, sorry, of the cube root of x minus 1. minus x minus 1. Okay, well let's go ahead and figure that out. I'm going to do this by hand. Hopefully uh, it won't take too long. So this is the same as like x minus 1 to the 1 third. So if I took the antiderivative, you'd use use substitution, but it wouldn't really make a difference. You'd end up with just u to the 4 thirds times 3 fourths. So that's the antiderivative of that. The antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. Antiderivative of 1 is x. And then the antiderivative of this will be negative 3 fourths x minus 1 to the 4 thirds. Okay, and I'll find the change of that from 0 to 1. So plug in 1, I get 1 half minus 1, minus 0. So that's negative 0.5. Uh, hold on. It shouldn't be a negative, right? Oh, because I have to subtract this with 0 plugged in. If I plug in 0, I get 0 minus three-fourths, there we go. So zero minus zero minus, this would be negative one to the four-thirds um, is a positive one, since it's the cube root, and then to the fourth power. So that positive 1 times negative 3 fourths gives you the negative 3 fourths. So I have 1 half plus a positive 3 fourths, so that'd be 1 fourth. What you would find is if you found this area here, this is 1 fourth, this area here would also be 1 fourth. You could find that without a calculator. You'd figure out that this total area is 1 half just going through and taking the antiderivative of this and plugging in your values, you'd find that also is one quarter. And check that with a calculator really quick just to make sure everything's good. Now, of course, with a calculator, the great thing is you can go from zero to two of the absolute value of this. Uh, it's something that you probably won't be able to do on your quiz today because it's without a calculator, but it's good to be able to check. So I go, Math 9, math abs, x minus 1 minus the quantity of x minus 1 to the 1 third with respect to x from 0 to 2. The absolute value should take care of those intersections. I should get something if I type something incorrectly. I gotta close off the absolute value here. That could insert, close that guy. That should be. Uh, Look at that, 0.5. Okay, so good for us. Next problem. We have these two graphs. Most likely they'll intersect two places. Let's find those intersections first. So I got negative x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals x plus 2. Get everything on the one side with a positive x squared. All of 0 equals x squared 
minus 3x minus 0, which is nice. So that helps me factor. I just have 0 equals x times x minus 3. I get x is equal to 0 and 3. Okay, so that will help me sketch because I need to just focus my attention around 0 and 3. So here is 0. If I plug in 0, I get 2. So we intersect at 0, 2. And we'll intersect at 3, 5. Four, five. Now, x plus 2, linear, will look like this. Negative x squared plus 4x plus 2, I can just go ahead and probably assume it's going to look something like this. But just to check, uh, I plug in 1, I get 4 plus 2 is 6, minus 1, that's 5, so 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I plug in 2, that's probably my vertex, I get 8 plus 2, 10, minus 4, that's 6. So there is the graph of negative x squared plus 4x plus 2. Then... I can find that area, set up my integral correctly. It would be the integral from 0 to 3 of the top minus the bottom. The top is the negative x squared graph. I'll immediately go minus x minus 2. It's minus the quantity of x plus 2. But I'll do that so I can simplify this. This is the area from 0 to 3 of negative x squared plus 3x uh, plus 0, which is great. With respect to x, you get negative 1 third x cubed plus 3 halves x squared from 0 to 3. You just have to plug in 3. 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3 is 9, so this is negative 9 plus 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. 27 divided by 2 is that, and then I, of course, would subtract 0. I realize this is going to be a positive. This is the same as negative 18 halves, so this is positive 9 halves. You can check with your calculator. Most likely, you'll get that. Next one, 44, we have two um, uh, trig functions that we're trying to graph in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 6. So immediately, I'm just going to graph them, thinking about negative pi over 2 and pi over 6. So that's like right here before. I should probably kind of shift this over a little bit. Good. Well, let's graph sine at negative power of 2. Sine at negative power of 2 is negative 1. Okay. I know the sine of 0 is 0, and I know the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So here is the graph of sine between negative pi over 2 and pi over 6. Uh, it should be... Yeah, I think that's right. But the concavity changes instead of just concave up and concave down. Hmm. Overthinking this. It's all right. Whatever. Look something like that. Let's try cosine of 2x. So I plug in pi over 2 into the cosine of 2x. I get the cosine of negative pi. Cosine of negative pi is negative 1. So they intersect right here. Okay, that's good. 
then I keep going. I have the cosine of zero. That's one. So we are going to pop up and look like this. And the cosine of two times pi over six is the cosine of pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is a half. So it comes back down and gets that. So it looks like we're going to ha have this area right here where the cosine of 2x and the sine of x kind of intersect between those two points, something like that. So to find it, you would say, okay, we're just going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 6 of the top, which is cosine 2x minus sine 2x, or minus sine x. Antiderivative of cosine 2x is 1 half sine 2x. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, so that'd be plus cosine. Find the change between negative pi over 2 and pi over 6. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, so this would be root 3 over 4. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 minus, yeah, and it's the sine of negative pi over 2 times 2. That would be the sine of negative pi, which is 0. And then plus the cosine of negative pi over 2, that's 0 as well. So it ends up with this, which is, you know, root 3 over 4, this is 2 root 3 over 4, so I'm thinking we're 3 root 3 over 4. Let's check that. Maybe I made a mistake, who knows. Math 9, cos 2x minus sine x with respect to x from negative pi over 2. 2 pi over 6. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. I'm hoping that's 3 root 3 divided by 4. Boom! Feel pretty good about that. Okay. Next one, 56. We have y equals x squared and y equals root 3 minus x, 3 plus x. The question that was asked here is like, why is this a question that is tough to do without a graphing calculator? Uh, use the integration capabilities of our graphing calculator to approximate the area into this. Well, let's see. The reason why this one would be tough is because this is tough to solve by hand. The, the cube root of x minus 1, you know, that kind of we can work out. This, not so much. You know, you think of values like 1, and I'm like, nope, that doesn't work. You think of like, uh, I don't know, values that might make sense, like whole numbers. So like 6, if I plug in 6, I get 3, and this is 6 squared, so that's all. So it's like, I don't know what this is going to look like. So I have to use my calculator for this. So I have x squared. I have root 3 plus x. And I graph. There's x squared. There's the root 3 plus x. So it looks to be something where, and it should make sense, the graph of this. We have this this area right here. But the question is, you know, what are the bounds? What, where is this point? Where is this point? Well, in your calculator, you can find those intersections. Second calc intersect. We find the first one is at negative 1.164. O three. We don't round until we get our answer. O three five. And then the other one is going to be at 
at 1.4526269. One point four five two six two six nine. Okay, so it turns out we're going to have the integral from I'm going to call this a and this is b from a to b of the square root function, which is above, minus the x squared function, which is below, and I will plug that into my calculator and find out the value. Math nine the integral of the square root of 3 plus x minus x squared with respect to x from a to b. I get 3.0577. Just round up there. Okay. Final problem, we had 78, which is y squared equals 4 minus x, and x equals 0. So problem that probably uh, tripped you up, is that you don't know how to deal with the y squared. We also need to figure out what this line x equals a is. So that splits us in half. We're going to go ahead and solve for y. I get y equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x. I can kind of graph that. So we got x equals 0. That's this line here. And I got 4 minus uh, x. So if I think about Plugging in 0, I get the square root of 2. I can plot that. And the square root of negative 2, since it's plus or minus. If I plug in 3, uh, or if I plug in, yeah, 3, I get the square root of 1 and negative 1. If I plug in 4, I'll get 0 and 0, giving me the graph of y squared equals 4 minus x. Okay, well, first, to find this line x equals a that splits this region into two equal parts, I'm going to first find this area here. Well, to find it, this would be the area from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, under the top minus the bottom. Well, the top is 4 minus x minus the bottom is negative root 4 minus x. Well, that might seem tricky, but turns into just 2 root 4 minus x's. So it's almost like take the area of the top half, multiply by 2, you'll get the area of the entire thing. It's not almost, it is. Okay, so let's find this area. Well, I would have to use u substitution. I'd need a negative in my antiderivative. So I'd have negative 2, 4 minus uh, x to the 3 halves, and I need to multiply this by 2 thirds, so this would be negative 4 over 3. And I would find that change between 0 and 4. If I plug in 4, I get 0. I plug in 0, so I'm going to be subtracting the negative 4 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32, negative 32 thirds, or positive 32 thirds. That can be checked with a calculator. Well, we need to now find the line x equals a, which is probably somewhere maybe around here, maybe a little bit to the left of here, where the area from 0 to k under the 2 root 4 minus x equals half of this, so 32 sixths. Well, pretty much what you have to do is take the antiderivative of this again, plug in k, and just see when this, which is the antiderivative, 
negative 4 thirds, 4 minus x to the 3 halves, this would be from 0 to k is equal to 32 6. You would say, when is this with k is equal to 32 6? So negative 4 thirds, 4 minus k to the 3 halves equals 32 6. So we will graph to solve that. And then we'll take our quiz. Never like division without parentheses. There's the antiderivative. There's the line. I'm not looking. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Unless I took the antiderivative incorrectly or typed it incorrectly. I don't think they'll intersect here. I'm going to say no. Let me make sure this antiderivative is correctly. It's u equals 4 minus x. du is equal to negative 1 dx. dx is equal to negative du. So it's u to the 1 half. The Antiderivative is u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds times that negative 1 times that 2, so that's negative 4 thirds, 4 minus x to the 3 halves. feel like it might have to be like a plus or minus, like if this was a positive, the two graphs would intersect. If you wouldn't see a question like this, that would be this difficult. 1.48, 1.48, kind of like where I saw. Yeah, either there's a negative that I'm forgetting about that maybe I I took too many times, but I don't think I did. Um, oh, gosh. It's not going to be this with just K plugged in. That's the problem. If I plug in K, I get this. But if I plug in zero, goodness gracious, Mr. Messner, I get minus negative four thirds times four to the three halves. So that's the whole 32 thirds. So if I add this 32 thirds, this would become a negative and then boom, you'd have it. That's not that bad. I'm just making too many mistakes. Okay. So I uh, hope you understand the process. The process for finding this equation is important. Now, this would be the integral that you'd have to set up. To do that problem, there might be a question that asks you to just set up the integral. Well, it's just the area from 0 to whatever this value is, x equals k, has to be equal to half of the total area. And then if you wanted to solve the equation, you'd have to set up this. Now, both of these questions are going to be asked of you in your quiz. And you won't have to solve this using a calculator. It'll just ask you to set up the equation. Okay, so be prepared to do that. All right, you're going to take your quiz now, and then... We're going to come back and do the lesson. Good luck. All right, we're going to start the lesson now that everybody's done with the quiz. 
more on the area of the region between two curves. This is with respect to Y. So instead of with respect to X, we're going to talk about area between curves with respect to Y, and I'll show you what that means. Okay. First, we're going to examine this region, and we're going to write integrals to find the area between the two curves. We've got Y equals X minus 1, and Y equals plus or minus 3 minus X. Okay, well, if I think about, you know, finding areas using the top minus the bottom, so dx, we got this top, which is x minus 1, minus the bottom, which is this negative 3 minus x, until I get here. And then all of a sudden, after here, the top becomes the positive root 3 minus x, and the bottom is negative root 3 minus x. Well, the question is, where does this where do these two things intersect? Well, when x is 2, you can see 3 minus 2, you get the square root of 1, which is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so at 2. So that means I need two integrals, right? I need first the integral from, looks like we intersect at negative 1. That's correct. 3 minus negative 1 is 4. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, so that's good. Um, and that's the minus, so I get the integral from negative 1 to 2 of the x minus 1 minus the root 3 minus x dx. And then I'm going to add the integral from 2 to 3, because that's 0, of the root 3 minus x minus the negative root 3 minus x which you can just write as 2 root 3 minus x's. I like this as 2 root 3 minus x. All right, now, notice this is kind of like messy. You know, this is a lot of stuff that we'd have to take the antiderivative of. And having to split this into two things because we have two different tops and bottoms, that's a problem, okay? But it turns out there is an easier way, okay? We are used to finding areas under curves with respect to x, dx. So if I want to find an area of this guy, yes, I can take rectangles that are vertical whose height is the function value and whose width is an instantaneous change in x. I can add up all of those rectangles, and we would find the exact area of these infinitely skinny rectangles. Well, and, you know, these are y values, right? Function values, which are y. So the y is the height. The dx, this x distance, is my, my length, uh, my width. So width times height, y times x. Well, what if I wanted to find the area here? Well, there are two ways. You can either have the top piece minus the bottom piece, that would create this rectangle right here. But then we have, you know, a Y minus a Y. Or I could take that rectangle and put it this way. And I could just start summing up an infinite amount of rectangles this way. And I would really start with my, like, rectangles down here and take this one, and then I would add this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and I could cover all the area, and I'd have an infinite sum. Just like here, I would start with this rectangle, add this guy, this guy, this guy, and like an infinite amount of those guys. Well, let's think about what makes up these rectangles. Well, it's another width and another height, only now the width is the length. You know, it's like the long side, and the height is actually what was our width. So it kind of, kind of changes a little bit, but it ends up being really, you know, the same. So this height of this, I wish I could draw a rectangle. This is really frustrating. I'm just going to do a straight line. Can't even do that. I want a rectangle. I'm going for it. Sure, it's a little bit wider than I would like, but whatever. Okay, so 
this rectangle has a height right here that would be an instantaneous change in y. It's an infinitely skinny dy if we consider this an infinitely skinny rectangle like what we are doing with these integrals, these infinite sums. And the length, the width, would actually be uh, an x value. It would be a x value determined by whatever this function is, which is in terms of y. So an x value for the length, a dy as a height. This is different. So what I would do here is I would just take, you know, from 0 to 4, just the infinite sum of those y values. And instead of, instead of f of y's, you can do f of x and then times dx. That's, that's that one. <clears throat> For this guy on its side, well, I would take an infinite sum of these rectangles with width that is an x, which is a function of y's. I could put just f of y in here. And the height is going to be a dy. Now think about x's. We started at 0, and we had an infinite amount of you know, bases of these rectangles until I got to 4. Here, I am starting at y's. So I'm starting with a y that is 1, and I'm going to 2, 3, 4, 5. All of a sudden, I don't care that it's from 0 to 4 with my x's. That's, those are going to be the lengths, the widths of my rectangles. Now, since I flipped it, flopped it, I have the y's that are going to be my boundaries. So 1 to 5. This is very important to understand that if you are flipping and you're talking about rectangles with y's as heights, these are going to be y's. Whereas right here, we had x's and dx. These are going to be x's. Okay? So let's look at this previous example. Let's figure out a different way to find the area of this region. Okay? Well, I know this is y equals x minus 1, and this is y equals x uh, plus or minus root 3 minus x. Well, if I wanted to do it with respect to y, I'd have my rectangles going this way. Now, let's think about it. It's actually similar to situations where we had uh, areas between two curves, like if I had another curve like here. I just wanted this green part, and this was an F, and this is G. You know, the area was Y's DX, but of course, usually the Y's came from just functions that uses X's, so F of X. By the area between curves, I went with the top minus the bottom. I did F minus G from 0 to whatever. If I rotated this graph over here, and all of a sudden I wanted to find area between, let's do a little bit smaller here, like the area of just this region right here, let's see how I'd find that. What was top minus bottom rotated to be over here to the right turns into being a right function value, which is just in terms of y's, minus the left. So this would be like a g of y, and I'd say this is f of y minus g of y. So it's interesting. If you have dx's, we want functions with x's, and we want x's here as our bounds. If we have dy, we're going to have functions using y's, we'll have y's here. For area between curves using dx's, we have the top minus the bottom. For area using dy using these 
horizontal rectangles, instead of top minus bottom between two curves, it's going to become a right minus a left. And these are going to be y's. X is, these are Y. Okay, so I have the right function, which is the plus or minus root 3 minus X, and then I have the left function, which is the X minus 1. So I could try to write out this integral. So let's see. I'm going to go dy horizontal, so that's my height. My length is going to be this right minus the left, okay? But the right, let's do our bounds, I guess. So our y's are going to go from negative 2 to 1, we can see. But I can't really write this in here. We have y's here. I need y's here. I can't have a plus or minus in here. We have a problem. Turns out, if I plugged in x's, what I'd have is y coordinates in here. I don't want y coordinates, I want x coordinates as my length. So what we are having to do is we're having to solve these equations for x so that we put them in terms of y so that the functions with x's or with y's will give us x's. So I say solve for x so that we can have y's in our dy. So what is that going to look like? Well, I add 1, I get x is equal to y plus 1. Here, I'd square both sides. I get y squared is equal to 3 minus x. I then can add x, subtract y squared. I get x is equal to 3 minus y squared. All of a sudden, this is a function where it gives me x's in terms of y's. This is now a function that gives me x values in terms of y's. x values are going to be these widths of these rectangles. The dy is the height. So now I can do my right minus the left, the right being the 3 minus y squared. This gives me an x value, which gives me the right uh, length. I subtract the le left length, which is subtracting the y plus 1. Now, what we'd be able to find is that if I plugged this into my calculator and if I plugged this into my calculator, we'd get the exact same value. I would do that, but I don't have time to do that. So that's something that you can try. Plug in this that we just found using dx's and plug in this. Now, how do you plug this into your calculator? Well, you just pretend like it's with X's. I mean, you can just go and just say, with your calculator, negative 2 to 1 of 3 minus X squared minus X plus 1 DX, and you'd get the same value. Okay? So this is finding areas between two curves now with respect to Y. So let's do some examples. We're going to find the area enclosed by the graphs of Y equals X y equals 2 minus x, and y equals 0, using horizontal rectangles, so dy. Well, it looks like we're going, we have y equals 0, we got y equals x, we got 2 minus x, they're going to intersect at another location. I set these two equal to each other, 2x is equal to 2, x is equal to 1. So x equals 1 is where they intersect. So let's see what we look like. I have y equals 0. That is just a horizontal line right here. At 1, we will intersect at 1. So here is y equals x. And then 2 minus x, so 2 minus x would start up here, come down at 1. If I go down to when y is 0, 2 minus x, x would be 2.
Now, this is easy enough that you can use uh, geometry to find the area here, but the question is to find this area using horizontal rectangles. So this area is going to be one. Let's see if we can find it a different way. So horizontal rectangles, that means my rectangles to find this area would be right here. It'd be a height of dy and a length that would be this function value subtracted by this, this x value subtracted by this x value. Now, how do you find the x value? Well, you're going to have to turn this into a y equals, uh, an x equals with y's. I add x, I subtract y, I get x equals 2 minus y. So you want your x coordinate here, just take 2 minus the y that you're given. Here, same thing, we have y is equal to x, well, x equals y, it's the same guy, it's uh, the same thing. Now I have my functions in terms of y, so I have x's in terms of y's. I can write out the integral to find the area here with respect to y. I would say it's going from 0 to 1, which is my y's, and then it's right minus left, the right function, the right x value would be given by 2 minus y. The left x value would be given by y. So this would be the expression using horizontal rectangles to find this area. Let's see if we get 1, which is my guess. I get 2 minus 2y dy. I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus like I have been with dx's. It's fine. It's just going to be with y's instead of x's. So the antiderivative would be 2y. The antiderivative of this would be y squared. I'll find the change in that between 0 and 1. I'll get 2 minus 1 minus 0, which is what I was looking for, 1, the area of this triangle. Okay? So see, we can write this area out using one integral with respect to y if I use two integrals, or if I want with respect to x, all of a sudden with respect to x, we would have one integral from 0 to 1, and then we'd have another integral from 1 to 2. So it's different. I wouldn't say this is necessarily easier. It's different, but in certain situations, it will be much easier uh, than if you just wrote out multiple integrals with respect to x. It's just a whole shift of how we are seeing things. We are seeing things horizontally, dy, instead of vertically with a dx as a width. Try another one. Let's find the area between the curve of x equals negative y squared plus 2, between y equals negative 1 and y equals 1, and the y-axis. So what is that going to look like? Well, I have the lines y equals negative 1 and y equals 1. So I know I have to focus on that. I will just pick y coordinates to plug in here to help me find x coordinates. It's almost like instead of plugging in x's to get y's, I'm going to plug in y's to get x's. So I plug in 1, I get negative 1 squared plus 2, that is going to be 1. So it looks like we intersect right here. I plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 plus 2, that is going to be... Sorry. That's going to be also 0. It's funny. You plug in y, you can get... Uh, you'll get the x coordinate. So, I mean, I could try to plug in other y's, or I could try to plug in x's. Let's try to plug in a y of 0. If I plug in a y of 0, the question is, where is our x going to be? So if I plug in a y of 0, the x is going to be 2. So I have the point 2, 0. If I had the value x is 1, you know, if x was 1, I could find the y's. That would be negative 1 equals negative y squared. 1 is equal to... No, this is wrong. 
Never mind. Those points are wrong. When y is 1, x is not 0. x would not be 0. Um, when x is 1, we turn out, we find that y is plus or minus 1. So when x is 1, I get this here. Let's try when x is 0 or when uh, where we have points here. So when x is 0, I get negative y squared plus 2. I get 2 is equal to y squared or y is equal to plus or minus root 2. All of a sudden, we're up here at root 2 and negative root 2. So this is what negative y squared plus 2 would look like some kind of curve like that. It's kind of like a parabola. Maybe this isn't perfect, but nothing's been perfect in this lesson. Okay, so the goal really is to find this region right here. Now, is it tough to sketch graphs like this, x in terms of y's? Yeah, definitely is different. All you have to do is really just pick out some x coordinates and you'll be able to find those y coordinates. Now notice, this is a good, especially good example of why we need to be ready to use dy to find areas between curves instead of dx. Because if I use dx, I would have this right here, which would be a rectangle with a different top and bottom. And then I need another integral to find this area in here, which would be, you know, the top minus the bottom. Instead of that, we can just use one integral using horizontal rectangles with respect to y, where I just have this function on the right minus zero, which is the left. So it just would be this function. I know I'm going from negative one to one, so I know where my y boundaries are. We can write it out. So it would be the infinite sum of a bunch of skinny rectangles that would have widths. That would be this x-coordinate, which is determined by negative y squared plus 2. And this would be with respect to y. A lot easier than an integral from 0 to wherever this x-coordinate is, and then another integral for this top piece and this bottom piece. And you can calculate that. This would be negative 1y cubed plus 2y. Find the change between negative 1 and 1. This would be negative 1 third plus 2 minus. This would be a positive 1 third when I plug in negative 1. This would be minus 2. So it would be plus a negative. This would be a positive. It would be 4 minus 2 thirds. 12 thirds minus 2 thirds, 10 thirds. Okay? Let's do another one. Now, find the area of the region bounded by f of y is equal to y squared plus 1. g of y is 0, y equals negative 1, and y equals 2. This is new to you, seeing the f of y, you're usually f of x and x's. If this is y, f of y is equal to y's. This is like saying x is equal to y squared plus 1. This is like saying x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. So I'm going to sketch this first. We know x is 0 is important. We get y is negative 1, y is negative 2. So here is y is negative 2. I'll say this is y is 1. I'll say this is x is 0. So I got that. And now I'm going to take some x values, plug them in, and find the y values. So when x is 0, I get y squared plus 1. y doesn't exist. I'll have negative 1 is equal to y squared. doesn't work. I'll take a, and you should be able to plug in y values. Like when y is 2, I get x has to be 5. So when y is 2, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the point 5, 2. When y is negative 1, I get 1 plus 1, x is 2.
you can say when y is 0, x is 1. I can try when y is, this is not the best graph in the world. I should probably just move this up. This is y is 2. This is y is negative 1. That looks better. There we go. I can say when y is 1, I get 1 squared plus 1, x would equal 2. So when y is 1, x is 2, just like right here. So here's the graph of this y squared plus 1. You know, connect that nicely. Not bad. The region that they're asking us to find is right here. This is the region contained by x equals 0, y equals negative 1, y equals 2. Okay, now it's tough to sketch this, but really it's just based on the bounds, you plug in different y values, you'll find x values, you can go from there. So to find this area, we will really struggle if we tried to use vertical rectangles, because we'd have this rectangle, then we'd have this top piece, we'd have this bottom piece, we'd probably need three different integrals. But with respect to y, we would just have 1, where we have this right minus the left. The left is 0, so I would have the integral. I'm told what the y bounds are. It would be from negative 1 to 2. We'd have the x's here, which would be the length of my rectangle. These x's are determined by this function y squared plus 1. This would be with respect to y. And that's it. If you wanted to calculate that, you could by hand or with a calculator. Let's set up another one. Let me see my time. Okay. We got two functions, y squared and y plus 2. Well, just like with x's, these functions with y's could intersect. And we can find the intersection by setting them equal to each other. And finding the intersection will help us graph these two functions. So I get y squared equals y plus 1, y squared minus y, y plus 2, sorry, minus 2 equals 0. I can factor, I get y minus 2 times y plus 1 equals 0, y is equal to 2 and negative 1. So on my graph, I'm focusing on y is 2. When y is 2, x has to equal 4. y is 2, x is 4. y is 2, x is 4. So x of 4, y of 2 is one spot where the two functions will intersect. And then the other one, when y is negative 1, if y is negative 1, x is 1. y is negative 1, x is 1 y is negative 1, x is 1, that's the other spot. Now, x equals y plus 2, really you can just find out that it's a, it's a linear line. You can almost solve for y and you get y is equal to x minus 2. So that will look like this, just your straight line. Or if you wanted to, you could have picked out different y's, like when y is 0 x has to be 2 right here. When y is 1, x has to be 3. There's that point right there. That works. Now we can graph x equals y squared. You can either solve for y and you got plus or minus root x, or let's pick out some y's and let's find some x's. So when y is 1, x is 1. So 1, 1 is a point on x equals y squared. I got the 2. When y is 0, x is 0, 0, 0 is a point on x equals y squared. And I have this point here, meaning 
my function, that's not a function, but my graph of x equals y squared will look like this. You know, just like a parabola on its side. And we need to find this area here. Once again, with vertical rectangles with respect to x, this is going to be difficult. But flipping it on side and using horizontal rectangles, where we have dy as a height, we have these x coordinates as our widths. To find the correct distance here, it'd be the right minus the left. The right is the y plus 2. The left is the y squared. I would take the integral. Now, since it's dy, I need y. This is from negative 1 to 2. And I'd have the y plus 2 minus the y squared. If I were to do this with vertical rectangles, I would need both one from here to here and then another one here, which would be more difficult. Okay, finally, we're going to get to finding the value of y equals k that splits the area enclosed by these graphs into two equal parts. You have 4 minus y squared and y minus 2. So we'll do this one. And then it'll be along with this one. So this is the whole situation that we were talking about at the end of last class. Instead of splitting this region into two pieces vertically, we're going to split this region or any of these regions into two equal parts horizontally, a y equals some value. In this case, it would be 0. It would be perfect. But for our last one, at least, if you looked at the last one, you know, this one would not be right in between this one as well. Who knows exactly where this line would have to be to split the region into two equal regions. Okay. To do that, first we need to find the actual area. It's going to be the same deal as we've done before. So let's first figure out what this region will look like. I'll find the intersection first. I get y squared plus y minus 6 is equal to 0. That's y plus 3, y minus 2. So I get y equals negative 3 or positive 2. So in my graph, I'm focusing on the region when y is, y's are between negative 3 and positive 2. Uh, and not really that region. You know they're going to intersect, so I don't, I don't need this. I don't know why I put this here. But we'll find the points where the two lines intersect, two graphs intersect. So when y is negative 3, we'll get x is negative 5. So that point, negative 5, negative 3. And when y is 2, x is going to be 0. All right, when y is 2, x is 0. So those are the two points where the two graphs intersect. x equals y minus 2 is just going to be a straight line that will connect these two intersecting pieces. 4 minus y squared. I'm not sure what it looks like, so I'm going to just start plugging in y. So when y is 1, x has to be 3. So y is 1, x is 3, 1, 2, 3. When y is 0, x is 4, so 4, 0. When y is negative 1, x is back to being 3. When y is negative 2, we get 4 minus 4, we get 0. When y is negative 3, we should get 4 minus uh, 9, which is that negative 5, which is what we got. So here is the graph of 4 minus y squared. Okay, and there's the region. Let's find the area of the region. It'd be the area from 
negative 3 to 2, those are my y's. The right function is the 4 minus y squared minus the left function y minus 2. And I'm going to use my calculator to find that region. So I'll go 4 minus, instead of y squared, it's x squared minus x plus 2 with respect to x from negative 3 to 2. Okay, 20.8333, which is 125.6. Okay, so that's that. We have that. Well, the next question is, there is a line somewhere, y equals k, that splits this region into two equal parts. Doesn't look like it's going to be down there. Maybe right here, maybe around zero. How do we find that? Well, it's just like finding the x equals. We know that the area from negative 3 to k will equal half of that, or the area from k to 2 will equal half of that. Unfortunately, this isn't as easy because I don't have a 0, but I can set up either from negative 3 to k, dy will equal this times 1 half, or from k to 2. I'm going to go from negative 3 to k, so I know that the area from negative 3 to k under this equals 125 over 12. Well, this is a start, and you know I can simplify this, of course. This 4 plus the 2 is going to be 6. Well, I can start to solve this. I first have to take the antiderivative. And I'd have to find the change in that between negative 3 and k. Well, I can plug in the k. That's no problem. But I also have to plug in this negative 3 and get a value. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. So negative 1 third. K cubed minus one half K squared uh, plus six K. Of course, I don't want that. I want this with uh, negative three plugged in. So let's do that. I get negative 13 and a half, so that's minus negative 13.5 is equal to 125 over 2, 12. That's plus a positive. I can now graph this, graph this, see where they intersect. Or if I wanted to subtract 13 and a half from 125 over 12. I get that, and I can see where those two intersect. You can tell a lot of these problems are very involved. They're definitely very different. Uh, and when we're flipping things around, obviously it's a, it's it's more confusing. You're probably not going to want to ever find areas with respect to y, but it's just something that you have to do and have to be comfortable doing. So graph.
Notice there's three intersections. We're trying to find the one between negative three and uh, two. So it'd be between negative three and two as an X. Since I switch it to X between negative three and two, looks like it's that one right there. Turns out that's when X is negative 0.5. So that's when K is negative 0.5. Well, turns out right here at Y equals negative 0.5 seems almost too easy of a number, but the area underneath this line is equal to the area above this line. Okay. Thanks for dealing with this video. I'm sorry that I had to be absent again, but hopefully uh, we get something out of it. Obviously, uh, work on your homework. It's all with respect to why, so start getting used to it, and uh, we'll work through any problems. Thank you.